and welcome to episode number 48 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. And this is going to be a little bit of a special episode because last Tuesday, it was a year ago when my first episode went live. So this is my podcast anniversary. So yay! Uh, okay, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lisbeth, your host, and I will tell a little bit more about myself this time because... I think it's been a year since I've had a proper introduction. So I'm Lisbeth, I'm Dutch, I live in the Netherlands, I live in Eindhoven, together with my boyfriend who is now hiding in the bedroom because I told him not to interrupt me while podcasting. I'm in the living room, so I claimed like the the one big room in our house to do this podcast and he's gonna have to deal with sitting on the bed and reading a book. Anyway, apart from me, you may hear some sounds from uh, my pet gerbils that I have behind the camera there. There's my two pet gerbils. I used to have more when I started this podcast, but they don't grow very old. And some of them were already quite old when I started podcasting. So I have two left now, uh, two little boys, and uh, I love them to bits. I tried to pick them up and show you for this podcast, but they did, really didn't want to cooperate today. I may try and take some pictures of them and show them. So in case I managed to take some proper pictures of them uh, today, well, the brown one is called Helmholtz. I call my gerbils after scientists. And yeah, he's a little bit overweight, but he's just a very lazy, happy chappy. <laughs> so that's him. And uh, his black and white friend, or maybe dark grey and white friend, is called Nyquist, uh, which is also a scientist. He's a bit more of an athletic one. He likes to run around in his exercise wheel a lot, whereas the other one only runs to find food, basically. So uh, yeah, that kind of explains their difference in posture, I guess. But yeah, that's just a way <laughs> of things, I guess. Anyway. So let's talk a little bit more about what I do in daily life. I uh, study mechanical engineering and uh, physics. So I'm in, in, into engineering and uh, so is my boyfriend actually. We met during our mechanical engineering education. Uh, yeah, we've been living together for like one and a half year now. And uh, yeah, I love yarn. <laughs> That's basically what I do with most of the rest of my time. So I have my pets, I have a guitar. So the intro tune for this podcast, I played myself. Although I should pick up a guitar somewhat more often, I guess, because I have not been practicing a lot lately. I've been practicing and knitting a lot more and I don't think my knitting is as, as rusty. Anyway, so let's get right into into the actual podcast episode. So today I am wearing my most festive sweater, I guess, which is uh, my Entrelock sweater in all the rainbow colors. And I designed this sweater myself and I tried to write up the design, but it's it's just really annoying because of the Entrelock. The technique is, well, a little less standard, I guess. And I made some weird increases and decreases and uh, Due to the nature of interlock, it's quite difficult to do increases and, and decreases. And that makes it virtually impossible to grade this sweater. Like, I know many designers don't like grading sweaters if they are just plain stock in it, <laughs> sweaters. Um, that can already be quite challenging to to determine how you need to do the rates of increases for different sizes. but. And this interlock thing, it's, it's even the placement of those increases is very tricky. So I decided not to write up the design for this pattern, although I have it almost finished, I think. Maybe I should some, sometime, but for now it's just not a priority of mine. Anyway, so I knit this sweater out of seven colors of, I think, Merino DK from Travel Knitter, which I purchased almost two years ago at Edinburgh Yarn Festival when I was there. It was the first time that I was there and uh, this year, end of March, I will be going again. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I can see clearly now in, in the corner of my eye, just behind the camera, that I, although my pets didn't want to go on camera today, they have definitely woken up in my attempts to, to show them. So 
um, yeah, they are going to distract me a bit. And one of them is now chewing away on the roof of this little house. They have like the wooden toys in their uh, cage and they are supposed to be chewed on. <laughs> it looks a bit funny. Anyway, so let's get into what I've actually been doing this week. So first of all, I have been knitting on my fishy socks again because I promised you last week that um, yeah, the next bit of my socks was going to be fishy and I'm now at the heel so but here it is the colorwork socks and they are knit out of long uh solids I believe not or superwash solids I don't know so uh, we have the wave and and the little wheel and the fish and then there's the wheel tails and then there is dolphins which I thought was quite cute and I think from here I will probably be repeating the patterns on the leg so I have a little bit of a gusset here um, because I thought for colorwork socks they are not as stretchy in the fabric as other socks so here I would like to have a little bit of a gusset going on and for the heel itself uh, this yarn it comes with a um, reinforcement yarn so that it's a bit messy in my project yeah. but uh, because the gray yarn is clearly on top of it but this is the, the skein but in the center of the skein you have this little bit of a bobbin with reinforcement yarn so you have to pull that out of the center of the skein in the beginning and I'm now holding it together with the actual strands to, to to both reinforce the heel but also just to make it a little thicker because the rest of the sock is color work so that feels quite thick as a fabric because it's double layer of yarn and then it would feel a bit weird if the, uh, if the heel itself uh, would be thinner I guess. What you can hear now is one of my pets who's drinking from a drinking bottle. So they push um, with that tongue to, uh, on a little ball and that gives them a little drop of water every now and then. Uh, so it takes a while before they're done drinking. <sighs> they are crazy acrobats, you guys. I wish I could, could just show you what they did sometime. Sometime, I will show. Anyway, so that's my colorwork socks. They are coming along nicely. I have only been working on the one sock though because I was... Well, first I wanted to figure out what this sock was going to be like. The second sock is like on, uh, on this point. So I have not even started whales on that one. So, uh, yeah. Colorwork socks. And I believe I'm forgetting something completely. But I will go and pick it up right now. So, that was yet another interruption of this podcast today. I don't know. Today is the most chaotic podcast episode I've ever recorded so far. So uh, yeah, apparently after a year you still run into new things. Anyway, so last week I've shown you this sock which was already finished and now the second sock is, is also finished. Uh, these are the Blueberry Waffle Socks by Sandy Turner. This time I finally remembered her name. I did actually uh, alter the pattern quite a bit because I've just used the texture pattern for these socks. I've knit my own vanilla sock pattern. Um, yeah, to to make the shape of the socks and then just use her texture pattern for uh, the rest of the sock. But I feel like they are still blueberry waffle socks even if I knit the socks toe up instead of half down and with a completely different shape than intended in her pattern they are still blueberry waffle socks to me so I would still credit her for that and this uh, lovely yarn that I've used is uh, hand dyed by NJ and Mills uh, which is a I think fairly new uh, hand dyer from the UK I and she was so kind to send this yarn to me anyway so I, I paid for the yarn but her shop actually did not allow for international shipment at the time I'm not sure if it still doesn't but uh, she has made some more sales now so maybe she's opened up her her shipping a bit more but if not then well this is just information for you guys in the UK or maybe she's so friendly to send it to other people as well but 
Uh, I heard that Etsy can be a bit strange when it comes to shipping costs uh, every now and then. So I've also experienced that with ordering multiple skeins from, uh, from for instance, Lily Pond yarns, which I need, I used for my other project that I've used before, <laughs> that I've been working on this week. So this is my Japanese Dusala cardigan, but this yarn is Peaches and Cream by uh, Lily Pond yarns. And when I tried to add multiple skeins in my basket, I bought three skeins at a time and then I would also triple the shipment cost, which it, of course can happen at some point that, you know, the ship, shipping costs increase because you're ordering a bigger pack a parcel that, that completely makes sense, but not at a rate at which Etsy claims it does. So, yeah. So I've had some uh, refunds of... Uh, of shipment costs a few times in the past, which is a bit silly in fact. Anyway, and this week I tried to order something from a Dutch Etsy store, which has not arrived yet. Uh, but for some reason it just wanted to calculate a shipment cost to the UK, whereas I clearly stated that my address was in the Netherlands, so it didn't really make a lot of sense. So uh, yeah, I had to pay international shipping costs to Etsy because I was not international shipping. I don't know. It was a bit strange. So anyway, so this week I've actually made a lot of progress on my uh, Dusala cardigan, which is mostly because I wanted to clear the needles. And for once I'm actually at the end of a row, so I can show you maybe a bit better what it looks like. So you can definitely see the general shape, I guess, of a cardigan here. And there is a stitch marking a marker dangling down there, which is a little teapot, which I also got from Lily Pond Yarns uh, about a year ago when I had just started this podcast. And I, I, I just love this stitch marker. I also have one that looks like like teaspoons, which I got from a friend uh, later on this year. But I love the tea related ones. Anyway, so. Uh, here's the lace panel that I'm knitting both on the front and the back, but I think on the back side it will show a bit better. Uh, so this is not actually in a Dusala pattern. Uh, so the Dusala cardigan is a cardigan pattern from the Ziggurat book uh, by Asa Tricosa. And I've already knit a Ziggurat before out of my own hand spun yarn, which I'm not currently wearing, so it's a bit silly to talk about the cardigan that I've have at some point knit maybe, but uh, this is the same basic shape, but I've added this uh, lace panel, which I've just copied from the uh, Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible, so it's nothing like my own design, because I would never have come up with something this intricate, I guess, but yeah, it's a very nice pattern, and um, I feel it's very memorizable, but maybe other people would think differently. I don't know. I typically don't have much trouble reading my knitting and also not in reading lace charts. So yeah, the, the stitches for the for the sleeves are set aside, but that was already the case last week. But yeah, the body has grown like six inches, seven inches maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm like eight inches below the the uh, sleeve separation now and I believe I have to go to something like um, what was it so I'm slightly over 20 centimeters now and I have to go to 37 so that would mean something like 15 inches that sounds about right for a cardigan so yeah I'm um, almost halfway there and there's been some some shaping along the sides. I don't know if you can see that it should be quite subtle, but uh, I've decreased for the waist. So uh, I'm already in increasing out for the waist again. So yeah, this cardigan is coming along quite nicely and uh, it is a bit of an intricate knit. So I just felt like <laughs> doing something easy as well this week. So I did. You, I told you before that uh, 
I wanted to knit a biscuit head again so I worked on the biscuit pattern again but I've modified it significantly because this head is significantly less slouchy but therefore I like it a lot better but this is out of my hand spun from Stranded Dye Works and yeah I, I love how it turned out it turned out a lot more like a well it's not a solid color but a lot, a lot more like one color overall with, with just subtle variations in the skein uh, whereas I had thought it would be a bit more variations going on but I, I love how it turned out and uh, yeah so I just fiddled uh, around a bit with the placement so up to the first pattern repeat basically I had knit exactly according to pattern but then I already knew that I w wasn't going to want to knit this head as deep as the previous one so that I could just wear it as a beanie uh, so it, it covers my ears well almost because you know you can see like it does not entirely cover my ears but this is good enough for me this is kind of the shape that I like a hat to have because I don't like it slouching around and I don't don't like it to be too loose and then I feel like I'm gonna lose it although the other one is nice because if I have a um, if I put up my hair then it, it will fit over uh, a bun <laughs> so that's also nice but it's good to have some variation in your hat wardrobe as well so this is actually just like a third hat I've ever knit for myself but yeah here it is it's a biscuit hat so that's a pattern by Lorraine Ashley um, on Ravelry and she or maybe you can find her as Elena's Crafts I'm not really sure what her uh, Ravelry store is called but yeah I've knit a another biscuit hat and I should make a project page for it but this was really just an instant gratification knit because I, I just wanted to have a project that I could finish fast so then there was one more thing because this is my podcast anniversary uh, I, I really want to thank you so much for joining me along <laughs> this ride uh, it, it's been a lot of fun and um, I've had some tough times in the past year and I know that this podcast has given me so much positive energy and uh, yeah I, I don't think that would have happened if it weren't for you so I want to give back something uh, to you because you've given me so much and uh, I want to thank you so much for for uh, watching this podcast so I and giving, uh, doing a giveaway and I was planning on also hand dyeing some yarn to go with this project bag but unfortunately it isn't dry yet and also it has some wet spots so I need to improve on that a little bit but it will be some time before I actually give it away because I want to give it away after my birthday my birthday is March 4 so uh, that will give you some three weeks to uh, enter this giveaway and uh, you will also be able to win this project bag which you can see so this is a drawstring bag uh, with actually a uh, string in in there so uh, this should easily fit a uh, sock project and possibly a small cardigan because I know that I've used the same size bag for um, my Japanese Dusala cardigan I don't think it would fit like very heavy cardigans like the ones that you or, or maybe if you have a somewhat bigger size then maybe it will get difficult but something that is up to like four skeins of fingering weight could fit in there um, but at, with four skeins it will be pretty cram packed but for everything that's smaller so socks would definitely fit in there um, it would be usable I guess or you could of course use it for something that's completely yarn unrelated I don't care <laughs> what you want to use it for so uh, yeah so it's a, a project bag with uh, little stars and then some just dots on the top and some simple fabric as a lining in the inside so to enter this giveaway I would like you to ask a question in the comments down below on YouTube um, well you, you can just ask a question that you would like to have answered on this podcast so I will try and answer them all on 
on the week after my birthday. Um, but keep in mind that, of course, if questions get a bit too personal, that I might not answer them. So I will decide for myself if I think a question is appropriate or not. So, yeah, I uh, hope to hear from you again. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing this podcast anniversary with me and for being here along the ride. It, it really means a lot. So, yeah, thank you. Just really thank you. So I guess that was about it for this week. I don't think I have any more projects to talk to you about. So, uh, yeah, have a lovely week and I hope to see you again next week. So, bye!